it's great yeah cool all right we are live ladies and gentlemen welcome um this is episode 24 tomo so this has been that's going 24 it, that's like it's crazy nice yeah man but thank you so much so everybody tomo fujita's here um yeah. big fan and i uh, i know you because i was a student at berkeley so i saw you cruising the halls at one point <laughs> but um thank you. thank you so much for taking the time man i know you're crazy busy oh you're welcome yeah yeah thanks cool. so much for having me and you know so yeah today is again like a really uh busy day wednesday i teach all day so you know yeah that's why yeah. it was the wednesday busy day yeah yeah <laughs> has everything kind of since everything went down last march i know things have changed is, at least for like teaching purposes for berkeley but for you for yeah. gigging and everything is it totally just changed yeah the first of all march i was supposed to go to japan and then i was teaching chinese students around uh, you know maybe january my ch one of the chinese students says I, I, you know, you should cancel all the gigs and uh, lessons in Japan. I was like, wow, I already booked everything, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then that, that March was like, or, or like, you know, I tweet my lesson in Japan two days. I feel like five days of worth of lesson. They all, you know, sold, right? Still, I'm getting a lot of uh, um, questions, you know, requests. And then I had to decide almost like, beginning of uh uh february maybe i forgot when but then i have to cancel everything so that's already everything changed i can't go to japan right and then berkeley changed to everything online but luckily i, I was already doing skype lessons so everything on the computer i have ready to you know use all the resources and so i was okay to tr transition to you know regular to online that was good yeah that's great yeah. that's awesome we can get we can get deeper into all that but i beginning yeah. of the show i i usually talk to all my guests about like i have a moment in my life mm -hmm. that i knew i wanted to play guitar and and go down that route of being a musician and yeah. be a student of music do you have a moment like in your life that you remember like specifically like wow i want to do this yeah well it's not really the moment but what happened is I had always imagination so that, um, okay, so I was in junior high school and then, you know, I listened to rock music, some fusion music. And, but that time I did, I never really play gigs, you know, play band. But then uh, my wild dream is when I go to work, I'm not work, I'm sorry, go to school, I always dream I'm playing on the stage with somebody. But every, you know, um, information come from records, kind of a playing in my head, like a playing on the stage with somebody. And when I, f you know, feel that, I feel like, wow, this is really great. Even like walking the street, walk, great feeling, thinking about it. So I think that really made me, oh, I really want to play, you know, music more. Yeah, definitely. Was it what was the music you were listening to? Like I know you said fusion and rock, but like specifically yeah, what were you well, beginning really beginning is a Japanese kind of pop rock. Uh a person named Cha C H A R Cha. And she, he was, you know, he was a singing English and you know, screaming guitar with a Mustang, you know, and then that was the beginning. And then next one, um, just like everybody else, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and then Robin Trova, Jeff Beck, and then right after that, you know, uh, going to Corner Dupley, Larry Carlton, you know, uh, all all like a jazz fusion. Because of Japan, I think some producer was really like gathering these, you know, crossover musician late seventies, then make more like you know, kind of a different album toward the Japanese um, uh, music scene. So I think like you know a lot of fusion music really stuff, you yeah. know those bands was really popular in Japan. So that's what I was really into. Okay. Yeah. Did you? So when did guitar into your life? Like when's the first time you put your hands around a neck? How old were you? I was, I was about twelve. You know, twelve I believe. You know, and I got the guitar. But then what, exactly about one year, my guitar is kind of hanging on the bed. No idea what to do. <laughs> that, that that was kind of funny because i can see play like this 
I still remember. It sounds nice, but doesn't do anything because I don't, I don't do anything, right? So <laughs> kind of nice, but I don't know, right? And then um, this is great because one of my friend, friend brother, older brother, just got Les Paul and start playing power chords or you know figuring Led Zeppelin. So I see him. He got the guitar and he started playing. That made me think, maybe I can do that, you know, something like that. Then then I was lucky. Everybody I meet around the town, somebody plays open chords, somebody play Eric Clapton, somebody play Led Zeppelin. So each one show, showed me a few things. I think that was a lesson. Each one was a lesson. I didn't realize, you know. Right. And then each one, had, one guy had Les Paul, one guy had Telecaster, one guy has SG. Everybody has a different. Everybody kind of sh show off for me, you know, something. Then I go, wow, that's great. And one guy played Bluegrass. So like a lot open course. Right. Something like that. It just, you know, I was so lucky living in a tiny town in Kyoto. Around me, somebody plays guitar, and I ask something. Everybody answered me one particular thing become my, you know, little things to that, you know, write on. You know, yeah, that's so cool. So you were just taking bits and pieces from all your friends and yeah. family. That's awesome. Exactly. So beginning, I was totally like, you know, self-taught. But I know why I got better because each one taught me one thing really good. Then I took each one. Then I kind of kind of combine everything. And then uh, other funny part is I was, you know, really into Bruce Lee. So I was really doing karate. And my karate teacher, I found out that he was a jazz guitar player. I read an article about that with you, with Kenny Burrell. Yeah, he's a huge fan of Kenny Burrell. But funny part is his main influence, Barney Kessel. So he's playing... Like you know, West Coast swing is really swings, you know, but he mm -hmm. wants to do really bluesy, like you know, Detroit, New York sound. And I can see that through him. That was kind of a interesting being Japanese and see the Japanese guy who loves Kenny Burrell's Bernie Cassell. Totally he got the influence so much. And um he really he was really scared, that scary guy when he does the karate thing, right? But <laughs> Once, like, you know, we talk about guitar, his smile, it's just amazing smile. He doesn't smile when we do karate, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, and uh, after that, it, I was like, wow. So, I mean, four or five years, I didn't know. He was a really scary karate teacher. All of a sudden, he smiled about me because he was brought up with really, like, you know, strict family who has to do everything my father says my father very um like uh soft and he doesn't say opinion to people he never complain people you know so he was just sweet i really felt i wish he'd tell him something but now i think that's great because that's why i came to america i chose my life you know one suitcase one guitar full scholarship from berkeley so my my parents couldn't say anything, you know. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So uh, that's what I did. Yeah, but the karate teacher really taught taught me how to like study about the you know proper way because he felt he can't teach me because his ways are self taught. But he wrote actually one page of paper. This is kind of funny too. He wrote, you know, do this, do that, da 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 da. He ten things, right? Mm -hmm that and then you know i i think you know nine things like you know record yourself you're gonna disappoint disappoint yourself mm -hmm. uh, then go back to one that's his lesson <laughs> very much a lot of things so so that's why my teaching method is really focused on foundation mm -hmm. just like a karate i love that about what you do i i, I feel like the positive energy too that you have with like give yourself some grace like with all my students i always told my students listen man you got to suck before you get great it's just the way it is we all go yeah. through it you have right. to struggle but yeah. the struggle is fun that you make it fun you know what i mean yeah. like and know that you're right. learning something and i love that about you cuz i feel like with your guitar wisdom stuff even with your picks with all like the really positive yeah um, you know quotes and everything and it's so great, man. Like, and, and yeah, thank you can you. tell you came from that. Like, yeah, I came from regular family, nothing special. My parents didn't play, you know, music. 
everything normal and kind of poor, but somehow I I I got what I want, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it, in other words, the beginning, nothing is perfect. And you don't have to have a perfect life, but but as long as you have a freedom to do something a few hours a day, that's to me amazing freedom. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But people don't understand that sometimes because too much comparison, especially internet. Mm -hmm. That's why I teach students always calm down. <laughs> don't worry about it. Everything fine. I help you everything. So like that, you know, that's my beginning. And people, especially people from Japan, and you know, a little bit more um, anxiety problem, you know, mm -hmm. American people, maybe American people too, but just, you know, yeah, a little bit more anxiety problem. And, you know, uh, sometimes a little bit personal issue than the guitar, you know, skill issue because personality is kind of got in a way not able to learn. Mm -hmm. you know smoothly because too much thinking too much worry about things so sometimes i have to teach people first you just drop everything no pride mm -hmm. no pride and somebody said bad thing don't take personal and nothing you can make a negative right if somebody you know even you to be somebody said my time is awful i agree totally <laughs> That's why I have a metronome. Do you know what I mean? But if you have a if you have a adult and pride, hey, why you say like that? I don't like this guy because this guy is just I don't know. Maybe the, this guy is really a computer. You never know. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I tell people anybody who said wrong thing or bad thing on the internet, that's really not real people. You never know. You know. So yeah, if you seriously, it just. Uh, waste energy that's why don't worry don't compare don't expect too fast be kind yourself that's really my philosophy you know oh that's a beautiful mantra i, I feel like there's there's a lot of a lot of the time that i spent at berkeley okay when i went because i was an older student i was 28 when i went to berkeley you okay so i, yeah. I think i had a better mindset going into it realizing mindset, right. yeah realizing that there's going to be some 18 year old kids here that are burning players oh. that are way better than me. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> and that's okay. Well, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so many, so many great players, different age. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but what I liked about it was mm -hmm. that going there and knowing that you're there for you, like what yeah. you're talking about with guitar students, you're here because you want to improve. You want to enjoy at the end of the day, you want to enjoy this instrument. Right. That's what it's all about, man. And that's I feel like what you preach. Yeah. And I really love true. Yeah. That you you understand that really well. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But what um, was the first guitar that you had, Tomo? Like what was the first instrument? You actually, had? first guitar I ever had was classical guitar I borrowed from my you know relatives. And that's up a, a bad luck with that guitar too, because that was classical guitar. And um, you know, um, then I got it. Then um, a person said, you know, you can have it, and don't worry about that, you know. But then, um, of course, I was curious about things, so you know, I went to the record store to bought the, you know strings. But why do I know about you know steel strings or nylon strings right so classical guitar has nylon strings i didn't know i put you know i put the regular yamaha you know um regular strings you know then i don't know tune up so i just stop more like this you know hmm. and then like this is still we have a really funny conversation all for my family in japan oh i heard the big noise in the night what was that? <laughs> like this you know that was what happened this went out like this you know oh man and, uh, yeah this will happen because I put the string strings, so I didn't even play the guitar. I mean, that's <laughs> I was trying to figure it out, right? That's like a first like episode for me, like a guitar. Oh, I broke a guitar, you know. And of course, I had to apologize to the person, you know, <laughs> like that, you know. I remember. Then my grandparents always, grandmother, a grandfather really always like to fix the stuff. So you know, he puts the you know like a groove and stuff, but still keep moving like that. Really. <laughs> and I ended up like you know after that. I bought an uh, electric guitar, I think really cheap one. Then again, I, I don't even play 
but still i kind of stopped moving around the pot stuff you know i don't know i was doing some, something like that so ended up i don't know what happened that guitar then i decided okay i'm gonna focus on so i i bought a um greco acoustic guitar that's when i start playing a little bit you know open chords okay. and all that that yeah. was 13 i think so okay. like i don't have really a good episode about the first guitar because i ruined the first guitar <laughs> second one i ruined the third one is just the acoustic guitar then after that you know cha he plays mustang so i bought the mustang nice. i still remember Mustang is like has a little bit like you know kind of round you know surface of a neck, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that to bend, you have to raise bridge kind of high. Then I bend, it's hard to do. I always bring to the guitar, so can you make a little you know you know lower? And they can't do it because you know uh, function of a guitar neck. Mm -hmm. Now I, I like to play everything too high, so I I can bend it completely different. Anyway, yeah, that's so great. Many. <laughs> yeah that's funny i feel like everybody has that story man like my first yeah. broken string the first time i broke a string my brother doesn't even play guitar my older brother but i yeah. like came downstairs so upset because i was like i broke my guitar oh and my brother was like bro <laughs> yeah yeah just, that's just a string man like that's your guitar is not broken buddy it's okay but like i, I remember yeah i see, I see. everybody has that moment um mm -hmm. so i wanted to ask you so yes as far as like what are, what are the, the big records like you mentioned like jeff beck um I, I always like to kind of like pull some stuff from my guess about like yes albums that were like ex like extremely influential on you yeah because we all i mean i know you have that funk background the blues background yeah. heavy but i know you you said fusion and stuff and i'm, I'm yeah. huge into wayne Krantz and schofield right. and, and stuff yeah what was the stuff that really like was like okay buddy yeah. here's some real deal stuff I think the first one, you know, definitely like a beginning of a fusion, you know, listening Jeff Beck, I was like, what's going on? Really? I don't know. And just keep listening. But, you know, Jeff Beck, I listen, listen. So I never really copy anything, but I think I got a really huge influence from Jeff Beck about the tone, touch, time, and all that stuff, you know, improvisation. But then Larry Carlton, uh title called larry carlton you know first song room 335 that's the album i just listen every day almost and room 335 i you know copy every note but then this was a great lesson i learned every note i can play every note but i had no idea of the harmony <laughs> yeah so that was point that i'm missing and i can play note for note but I don't know that kind of bluesy sound, where that come from, where that jazzy harmony come from. So that album made me think, where can I get that sound? And most people probably say, yeah, copy exactly Larry is doing and, you know, copy, right? And what happens is if you do that, you become copycat, which is good at the beginning, but then nothing accomplished from there, you know? So, and I start reading what Larry Carlton was brought up so i found he was originally jazz guitar player they play with robin ford when he started playing more bending that's like 1974 or 72 i forgot you know early of them he didn't play bending then the play bending so that's one cue then he joined crusaders mm -hmm. more like r b soul so my then he said he studied with joe pass i so didn't this, know that yeah so, oh, so wow i so i really figured it out that one right before i come to america okay so, so so my guess was how can i get the sound quick so the first you know of course i figured out okay joe pass i have to listen to joe pass i listen to joe pass mm -hmm. bernie Cassell. You know, West Montgomery, Grand Green, Jim Hall, you know, Charlie Christian, all that stuff, right? Albert Collins, Albert King, Freddie King, BB King, you know, all the blues stuff. So I can see the picture that he listened that one. I didn't know R and B so much. So I started listening all this reading, you know, and mm -hmm. um anybody, you know, um uh uh, uh let, let's see. Yeah, Donny Hathaway. Ooh. Yeah, anybody, mm. you know, blues, you know, R&B like that. So 
then I was, you know, kind of studying that soulful sound, jazz sound, blues sound, and so try to mix it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, kind of hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the first step I, I, I go like, okay, I have to do study jazz because that's what my jazz, you know, I mean, karate teacher told me. So I went to jazz, you know, jazz school a little bit, but then I didn't like the teacher because teacher wasn't really willing to teach. I could teach. Now I can tell. He just did it for the money, you know. <laughs> jazz guy, he didn't like teach, you know, but then he has to teach fusion because I like it. I could see, I could see he's not in, really into it, but that was a great example. I don't want to be like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, not. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a great example. I don't want to be that. That's mm -hmm. great. I learned that. Then uh, I, I took a lesson with Takeshi Yamaguchi. He's more like a private teacher, jazz, you know, very well known in Japan, in Kyoto. So I studied with him about two years about jazz. And that really changed the whole concept about the harmony, theory, scale, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then blues, I, I was kind of, you know, I, I did listen blues like, a, you know, like an Otis Rush you know, Muddy Waters, I listen so many, you know, but then I only picked here and there because I thought just blues is easy. <laughs> I thought blues is easy, you know, because I was kind of stereotype. oh, jazz is hard, you know, mm. blues is easy. only three chords, oh, don't worry about it, right? That was like that, right? And then, okay, and then now right after that, I went to regular college, you know, study Russian. So I gave up my guitar, actually, age 17, 18. Mm. All people don't know. And I didn't want to say it because kind of dark day for me, you know. Right. Because those two years, only I did study every day, maybe 10 hours, 14 hours a day. Study, study, study. Man. I mean, summer, I get up at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock to, you know, 12 noon, 6 hours I study, take a break, and then 7, 12 hours a day. All summer I did that. Mm. Because one of my teachers at the high school said, if you study 12 hours a day, if you this uh, sleep eight hours a day, still you have a four hours left, and something like that. You know, <laughs> kind of funny thing, right? And after summer, I told him I did this one. This is he go like this. Oh, <laughs> like this. Oh, like that. I was. Like, he said that was expression. <laughs> you know what I mean? Expression. You could have told me that earlier, man. <laughs> yeah, I never ever expect people do that. He said. <laughs> and I did that. That's good, he said. But then I learned how to make effort mm -hmm. for things you don't want to do. What do you say to students who are asking, like, how do I practice? That's always the biggest thing. Is like people have the hardest time of like understanding how to practice. That's like an art in and of itself. Right, exactly. So how do you explain that to students? Okay. First, know about how many hours. How to practice is really how to study, how to make yourself available to listen every source you get. You don't mm -hmm. doubt anything. So if you practice just because somebody told you and you're not believing it, and that's all not, not, not gonna work. So a lot of discussion like that. So, you know, practice, how to practice. There is an art of how to practice for technique or for performance or you know so like diff different bits of it you know mm -hmm. and also playing and practicing two different things so most common mistake question is like this hey mark when you play it sounds so great what are you thinking that's the wrong question <laughs> because yeah. that means you are performing you're not practicing you're not thinking mm -hmm. but those you practice when you practice you thought about everything right yeah and that was that person's question but question was wrong you said probably oh don't worry about it i don't think anything you know, <laughs> like, you know? yeah right <laughs> so that's the end okay well i don't have to think anything you know so most people don't know what to ask mm -hmm. so we have to, yeah yeah so it, to, you know like yeah it's interesting like i because you have so like I have so many thoughts about like when I'm playing, if, like you're saying, when I'm just playing, I'm really not thinking about that other than trying to be lyrical. Yeah. 
okay. you know, and, and right. sound like a singer. Like that's oh, that's ultimately, beautiful. yeah, yeah, Mark, that's, that's the that's the that's the one you know, great for guitar player, lyrical, like a singer. That's yeah. why I play one string. I practice one string a lot because that's a singer to me. This this one it's more like a guitar player to me because you know, kind of memorizing position. That's why guitar wisdom, a lot of people surprised when people join the guitar wisdom. I don't have anything tablature, no PDF. So people join, where's a PDF section? I don't have PDF <laughs> because I explain everything in the video. Right. Yeah. Degree, yeah. everything, you know. So that's uh <laughs> shocking to people sometimes, but yeah, it is hard because you know, there that question that you mentioned earlier about like what are you thinking of when you're soloing? Right. Um, you know, and that's the problem. That's my biggest probably roadblock with playing straight ahead. Mm -hmm. Is it like it is too much thinking for me, like playing over changes? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you know, jazz, you have to think a little bit about the chord changes, but still you have to do that sort of by you know when you practice and when you perform, you know. So sometimes like you if you perform, right, then say somebody pull out the really jazzy, you know, difficult song. Then if you trust yourself, lyrical way to play, then you have to do it. don't play. Like in other words, if I ask, if somebody asks me, you know, Wallace or something like that, and then, you know, happen to be the song that really fast, you know, not really my type, then I put down guitar. That's all I do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't afraid to do that because I don't, I don't hear anything. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't hear anything. I just put down the guitar. Yeah. It's no offense, but really true, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think so, that's that's bold, and, and that's just knowing who you are as a musician, too. Yeah, because you know, I, I I like to play what I hear. If I don't hear, I just put down. I order red wine. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you know what's funny is I uh, I joined. It was like two or three years ago. I was in this trio fusion group, and I'm I I live in Baltimore. Um, Oh, okay. Oh. So we play. There's this. There's this little place called Bertha's. I mean, okay. it's like a. It's a jazz club, but it's a small like hole yeah. in the wall, like Wally's kind of thing. It's oh, awesome. Wally's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I love Wally's. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so these guys asked me to do it, and it's not my thing, but they're like, "You can do it." You know, we're gonna do some cool stuff like Teen yeah. Town and all that. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then when I started thinking about it, like playing over the changes in Teen Town, for instance, mm -hmm. I was like, "How am I gonna approach this to?" To be like hip, but also be doing something new. Mm -hmm. And when I really started to think about it, I had a, a lesson with I was um, talking to Joey Landreth, and mm -hmm. he was like, he was like, dude, just start with the triads, man. Like, yeah, every chord change, just think about the triad, and then you can yeah. bring in the tensions later, man. But like, yeah. you know, and and I wish I would have had someone talk to me about that yeah. while I was at Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, because there's so, so much uh, you can do with triads. That's why know? triads are really great. Yeah, I had yeah. a great experience because um, obviously when you learn scale, of course you have to learn scale modes. You know, important. Then a lot of teacher don't really pay attention about you know uh, triads or you know chords so much because kind of simple stuff. People just like you know, I was thinking blues is simple. You know what I mean? Kind of same way. But then uh, I was a band when I was a student at Berkeley uh, named stick people this is more like a pop rock band and the drummer write the song so he writes kind of funny chord changes little difficult chord changes so scale work scale approach doesn't work mm -hmm. because chord moves kind of quick in a kind of you know different structure and then i was start using triads triads always works with pop music you know so then triad to become my thing then i studied with bruce arnold who studied with you know um charlie banakas and i asked him about a lot of a chromatic approach you know in charlie banakas way the, you know approach the uh, triads and then he really taught me uh triads so then i start digging that much deeper mm -hmm. yeah there's so much you can do with it and, and i feel like just understanding like especially if you're playing in a group that's like doing r b and soul stuff yeah. like knowing your inversions of triads is the main name of the game <laughs> if you're playing that's sam great. and dave stuff or whatever yeah. man like that's yeah. your wheelhouse you know yeah it's so yeah. crazy so, so for example right like you say like you know you go like that a lot of people play the they don't know that's a second inversion 
Yeah. Fifth and third, like you know, because we went to school. I went to school. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know what I mean? Like that. But, you know, some people sound cool, mm -hmm. but they don't know what it is. Right. Which and is sometimes good. that's better almost. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's good. Yeah. yeah. But only certain kind of music you play, you know, feel good if you know that's good. But then if you want to be really versatile, you know, a lot of different styles, then like you you know educate yourself understand the triads inversion not mm -hmm. just the you know triangle shape you know top note of dope <laughs> you know it's good but you have to know just a little bit you know that's um that'd be great you know yeah that's how i feel i live my lifetime i was just enough to be dangerous <laughs> I, 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 I wish i would have studied great. i wish i, like I would have studied with you at campus <laughs> man <laughs> I wish I would have been able to study with you at campus because I feel like every time I tried to, you were you were full. But you know who I loved who really pushed me? Yeah. Is um Julian Casper. Really Julian, yeah. J J J Julian, like you know, first like I met him, he 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 says like, sarcastic stuff, right? He does, yeah. Right. Japanese people never ever like you know use a sarcastic joke. So first <laughs> time I talked with him, sometimes he'd say something like this. I take literally as a like, what are you talking about? <laughs> wow. Yeah, oh, 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 he said something funny, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know what he said to me the first lesson? He was like, yeah. he was like, what do you want to do this semester? And I was like, okay, okay well, I really, because I, I took lessons with Bruce, Bruce Bartlett my first semester. Oh, Bruce, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and he was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, Wayne Krantz. And he was like, no. <laughs> but I don't know if we can go there. And I was like, we can go there. But we didn't. But yeah, yeah. I... So you see, like that. That's like that. I I, I like the honesty, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was it was because, fine because you know he yeah because Wayne Krantz, amazing because he used to play jazz with real book, but then he dedicated original music when he decided that he just put down real book, toss it. Yeah. You know what I mean, like that. So he really into original music and improvisation. That's really tough to do because. With without that, you can't have a lot of different job, right? You know, kind of hard, you know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Well, what I loved about Julian is when he asked me and I said that, mm -hmm. he was like, All right, man. He was like, Let's do it. And he was like, Here's the thing okay. about Wayne. He was like, Here's the thing about Wayne. He's like, he's mm -hmm. like a swarm of bees coming at you. <laughs> so like, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it. And I was like, Yes, we're gonna do it. But okay. the, anyway, the first thing he said to me when I sat down after that yeah. was he was like, Do you know how to play little Wayne? I was ah. like, yeah. And he was like, do you know how to play the intro to Little Wayne? And I was yeah. like, yeah. And he was yeah. like, go ahead. And yeah. I played it. And he was like, okay. Nope. That's not it. And I was like, what? I thought that was it. And he's like, nope. Yeah. And then he showed me like Little Wing, the intro to Little Wing. Yeah. And that moment, I was like, <sighs> and it wasn't uh, necessarily harmonically what I was doing and like yeah. the little inflections and stuff that Jimmy does. He was like, your pick attack is wrong. Mm. And I was like, what? And like he like showed me this whole thing with my right hand, how much of a difference mm. just twisting your pick in a little bit and how you attack the string gets mm -hmm. it. And I was like, holy crap, this totally changed my world. Like, yeah, see, that's, it, a, that, that's a great about Berkeley. Everybody knows a lot of details, not just play song, you know, and then a lot of styles. That's a, you know, I really respect about the other teachers. They do a great job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mm. so, it's so crazy, man. It's, it was a wonderful experience for me. And like yeah. so many people are like, is it worth it? Whenever I was like, it was for me. I can't tell if you, yeah. you know, if it's worth it for you, but like, That's, I yeah. loved I mean, it. As long as you have passion and direction and determination to go somewhere big, higher, you know, then this is a place that you can really challenge yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you correct. You know, all depends on the person, but to me, that was so they so here's the thing larry carlton right so i decide i was gonna go to tokyo after you know study russian to become a studio mission maybe if we have a chance but otherwise i study russian become you know businessman so i make a lot of money that's how i figure out the ro study russian then i can play guitar for fun but then i i put the band together kind of funk band for fun and study jazz guitar so in other words I never ever gave up my dream. I still kind of doing a little bit in just mm -hmm. in case, you know. So that was kind of plan B. I was trying to plan B, you know, plan B <laughs> slowly. And then about a year, year 
about the one year study at the Russian, I was almost like, you know, really, really hard time because I don't like, I don't like, but I have to do. Mm-hmm. So every day was a struggle, you know. And then I found a guy named Koichi Osamu. He's an um, amazing bass player from Japan. He he just got a scholarship from, you know, Berkeley. And I found him because of a small city. I asked a lot of questions. He hated me because he, <laughs> I asked so many questions. But then he felt really, you know, my passion. After that, he really taught me many things. And then I made a scholarship day and I wrote an essay. I study English and I send it. I got a f- full scholarship. Mm. That's so, awesome. so back then, that's that's 84, 85, okay? 84 actually. And what I got, 4,750, I think. So I got like, you know, 2,000 from some scholarship from Berkeley and 2,500 from somewhere, Berkeley. Then I got twenty five hundred dollars. Wait a minute, two fifty. I'm sorry, two fifty back then. The John Abercrombie Guitar Jazz Award. I didn't even know who is John Abercrombie back then, you know. And then, then back then, that was like you know eighty. So I enrolled eighty six. No, you know, um, January. Back then, tuition was twenty five hundred a semester. <laughs> oh yeah, my gosh! So, man. so technically, I I was lucky. I got guarantee. 4750 a year mm. works right in Man. a two semester yeah yeah so that's why i got a scholarship then two years i worked in japan to get the you know my living expenses happening man that's so crazy was that like a did you were you scared when you were like i'm leaving home and i'm going see, to the, the US? Is, see i was i hated studying russian <laughs> at the, you know university right so when I got this one, it's just like heaven. I, I have no fear yeah. at all. That's I awesome. still remember, for, you know, November, I came to Boston, very cold. I arrived in Boston. I got a jet lag. That was first experience. Everything was everything fine. Mm-hmm. Every moment, I don't, I, can, I don't understand what people saying it. It fine. And every day I kind of ask myself, do I really like this? Well, I, I you know I want to go back home. And no, I just felt every day was just it just got today. It just same. That's beautiful. It just that's fantastic, awesome. you know. Yeah. Man, that's so great. Well, um, yeah. I don't want to run, I don't want to run out of time. There's so much I could talk to you about, man. I know, no, maybe I, we can do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk to you about gear because okay. mm-hmm. so obviously. You know, we all know it's not going to make you a better player, but it's fun. It's fun. And, and I know you like some of your gear stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah very important, right? Yeah. So, John, my buddy John's in here, and he was asking what kind of pickups are in your kanji signature. Yeah, strap. yeah, yeah. Okay. Kanji signature, right? This is, this is kind of crazy. Now, this one, you know, one pickup now, right? Like that. <laughs> so, yeah, this cool. is a grinning dog from Japan. Grinning dog. Okay. Yeah. So like, Grinning dog. Yes. So like this one is um you know original pick card from that one. So like this is all greening dog kind of. Oh cool. Thing. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. No. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go, John. Um, is there anything right now? Like obviously, I think I think we're living in the platinum age of gear for guitar players. Yeah. Well, like you know, I think so because internet is really shows us so many choices. And then all you have to do is this, you click and you can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I did it. Ah, you know, yeah, it's, so it's dangerous. Oh, it's super dangerous. Yeah. Is it is there anything that's like super inspiring you right now, gear wise, that you got that um is has like sparked ideas musically or anything that's like just like totally blowing your mind? Well, s- several things, you know, definitely I mean, definitely um I like a lot of Fender stuff. But then, you know, I use like this, like, you know, right? So so I always like this, like, you know, Frank B. Then most people play Frank B uh, <laughs> blues, right? Yeah. I, I play jazz for this one. Nice. Yeah. This and it's a really nice sound because it's not too heavy. Mm-hmm. Not too heavy sound. So this really inspired me. That's a different way. And then I use some more SG. SG for like a more, you know, funk, funk stuff. Yeah, I saw you playing that in one of your recent videos. Yeah, so like this one, 
you, you can see it, but here a lot of scratch already because I practice so much. Yeah, and then you know, inspiring usually kind of simple stuff. I like it. You know, I like a Fender uh, Music Master Bass sound because volume and tone. That's it. Nothing. Mm. So you know, I like that, and I always like effect. So I have a lot of different effects now. I'm trying to get into a little bit more like a fuzz and distortion sounds because normally I don't use these, you know. Oh man, we should talk about that yeah, because so that's what I'm kind of working on now. I love fuzz, and you know what's crazy? What I recently got, and I know it's it's super yeah, yeah. expensive, but I got that Chase Bliss Automatone. I don't know, yeah. J oh. Okay, Jason. Okay. No, the you know the Chase Bliss with one with the faders on it that move on their own. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude it has it's like i mean it's it's totally freaking me out because oh, really? yeah because it's there's so much you can do with it but the the fuzz in yeah. that pedal i was yeah. telling there's a couple of my friends are in here uh -huh. i was telling my buddy terry he's the guy that does the artwork he uh, i was telling him i think i'm getting some of the best fuzz tones i've ever had really? oh what kind of fuzz tone do you like kind of fuzzy fuzz tone like you know i i like super spitty sounds like your amps caving in on itself kind of fuzz okay. I see. What are you using right now? Like, what fuzz or pedals are you using? Uh, well, maybe I can play this one. Maybe. Do it. Yeah. Oops, sorry. So, okay. So, let me see. Okay. So, like, kind of simple. Thing. Now, this fuzz. So this one, a little bit more like, you know, um, let's see. That sounds almost like distortion, but it's, it's yeah. probably through the mic. It's yeah, it's like if you play soft. Fuzzy. Oh. So like a little, little different. And this fuzz, uh, like, you know. But also, I like you know distortion. This one. Like, oh, this one. But if you play softer, you know, you get a little cleaner, you know, something like that. Man, what what so what fuzz pedals were those and what distortion pedal was that? Yeah, this is a BJF right now. They're just testing, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because BJF, you know, beyond like from Sweden, he's a really good friend of mine since like you know late 90s, you know, and um yeah, he just built a lot of fun stuff, you know. So yeah, kind of handmade, you know, then uh, sometimes a little bit of reverb. So this is awesome. sounds really wide and big. Yeah, so like a great part is all, all his distortion is a every note's really like you know hum. yeah it's a really articulate yeah so this one right this part like check this out, right? Like, you know, he knows how to lay out the overtone. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> so this is like you know one one fuzz that you know um then of course you can change a different fuzz setting this model This 
same ones but different setting. Man. So like I like about. Any. That sounds great, man. Yeah. Oh. So it's an all handmade. You know? so yeah. So like this one. And this is really, you know, yeah, this is even front, right? So, so here's a distortion, really great, too. Like, yeah. Everybody knows, right? Even if, Man. See, even just. <laughs> It's you see regular distortion sometimes like a squash, you know. Yeah. Oh, like. Yeah, man. You can't not sound like Angus Young when you play an SG, man. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you're playing those kind of chords. I know, yeah. You know what else is great, man? This, this. I don't know if you have this. Uh, yeah, wow. That that's, that's J- cool. Wow. That's Jesse Davy King Tone. Yeah. Um, that's a great fuzz. Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't know if you've messed with Mythos pedals at all, but Mythos. Oh, I've seen that, but I I know I know I I never tried it. No, no. This thing's great. It's okay. it's based on the Cobb circuit. Wow. Um, but it's an this is an octave fuzz. Mm-hmm. And you also might really like um this these are kind of hard to find. Well, I think he still makes them now, but the Burkos effects third stone. Wow, you have so many. That's good. Dude, I'm collecting I've collected a bunch of fuzz oh. pedals. Oh. And you know what else I wanted to tell you is yeah, um a friend of mine, Emilio, are you familiar with cornerstone effects? Which one? Cornerstone. I don't know that one, no. So Cornerstone has a, a pedal that's, I think, in my opinion, it's going to become clon-like okay. in right. years to come. It's called the Gladio. Yeah. And it's a Dumble-esque kind of uh, thing. And I know to say that is kind of like, shame, shame. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I sold mine. I bought it in 2002 for 300 bucks, and I sold it in 2015 for $1,500. Ah, that's good, yeah. I just wanted, I really wanted to get a Sir Strat, yeah, I and I didn't, I didn't I, have the money. Yeah, I had one more, actually, a spare. I had one more. Uh, I gave it to my friends. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> you know, nice guy. I gave it to my friends. I almost want to ask, can you give me back? You know, I mean, I can get some cash. You know? Oh, man. But you, I think you should check out, I think you would really like the Gladio. And I was actually right. talking to Emilio because he's a big fan of yours. And he, oh, I think you, he, he wanted yeah. to get in touch with you about getting yeah. you one. I just want to see like a distortion, anything distortion fuzz, you know, around there. Like I'm trying to get it more like, a, yeah, almost like I want to get cleaner, but heavy distortion. It's kind of yeah. hard. Right. Well, that stuff. So the Gladio will kind of do that. That gets you kind of that Robin Ford type of thing. But it's like. It's like that um, big, warm, woolly, clean tone. Mm-hmm. It's like very clean and articulate. Yeah. But you can get it super growly. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. a two-channel guy. So like one of the channels is kind of more of the like um, boost circuit. Mm-hmm. And the other side is kind of more of that like second channel of a Dumble overdrive special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's, it's all Robin Ford I kind see. of based. So I yeah. think you would really like it. And he I, he was like, tell him I'd like to talk about getting him yeah, one. <laughs> so, like yeah, why not? Yeah. Because um, yeah, I always open to um you see what happens. I'm known as a clean, you know, tone guy, but I have a lot of an overdrive pedal collection just oh, yeah. because as a teacher, I have to understand a lot of different circuits, a lot of different ones, even like a TS10. You know, TS9, I have to buy so many of them to really check the difference. So I like always like you know, kind of figuring out. And so I would always tell people, this is my lesson fee for my education. <laughs> yeah. You know, it costs a little bit, but then that's how I understand the difference. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I think, you know, what's funny too is I think the one time, so when I went to Berkeley in 2008, that was yeah. the year that that mayor came and did that clinic at the BPC and you played with him. Oh, um, that's like a, 
I don't know how long ago that was. 20, that was like 2008. Yeah. That yeah. was like right. John yeah, Mayer yeah. shaved head era. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right. um, shaved, yeah, that's right. Right. And but I, I remember that he came once, once again, but then that was, a, you know, he asked me to play together. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. That was really funny because I was kind of a, I don't know what, what, what type of job I was doing. I, I, they, you know, Berkeley asked me to join like a team to, you know, help John around the Berkeley, you know, you know, he was kind of teaching master class, you know, for 12, you know, vocalists, you know, singer songwriter, I think. And I was there. Then sometime we jammed end of it. Then he asked me to jam with me a little bit. Then, uh, you know, and it, that was actually one night, maybe third night was very, you know, we had a really great time together. And he asked me after that, hey, tomorrow you want to play? Tomorrow? Your, your, your clinic? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah then uh then i play yeah that was fun yeah that was great that was my first semester and i was like holy crap if this is how it's gonna be going to school here i'm i'm sold oh, i'm all in <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that was great <laughs> that was so great yeah. man but yeah i remember he uh i remember seeing him in the hallway and i think you might have been with him um yeah. but like he didn't i was a songwriting major so yeah he's actually wild at that time because he didn't have any security back then he just he's around himself you know yeah, and I remember. Because we did spend actually five, six nights doing that, you know, teaching thing together. And so sometimes I, I drive him to his hotel. And then sometimes, you know, me and him, we, we, you know, go to the garage upstairs. And then, you know, I was like, wow, people don't notice you. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at it. Not <laughs> not being John Mayer. That's what he told me. Yeah, yeah, but I've uh, also shaved head, heads too. But uh, you know, he, he just, yeah, I think, you know, yeah, he's I, good at it actually. When we together, he try not to being John Mayer. He try to be regular guy. Yeah, but what what he feels that way, he, people don't recognize. It. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was. I feel like he was cruising on Newberry Street, just going yeah, in. Did, you know yeah. what I mean? That yeah. time when we were there. So, but that was great. That was like my first semester, and I just oh, remember. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I remember being like. Like, cause my, we, we, when I went to Berkeley, my wife and I moved, see, I was already married and everything. We moved together to okay. Boston. And I remember coming home that night and being like, babe, you're never going <laughs> to, you're never going to believe wow. me. But guess what? I just saw today. Like I was at school. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. That's great experience. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I do this thing at the end of every interview, Tomo, where yeah. I, I, it's called the lightning round get down. Okay. And what I do is I put on. Uh, a metronome for a little suspense yeah. and yeah. we have some we have 10 funny questions mm -hmm. so yeah. so what we're gonna do right now is the lightning round get down you down with this i think so it's just questions yeah it's just like funny this is just to round out the evening of the okay. of the hang sure. all right so it's very easy so this is just 10 questions yeah if you if you want to when you answer them you can go into detail as to why you answered that way or yeah. you can just just go through the questions, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. So, so this is a lightning round. So quick question. So first yeah. one's always the same. Yeah. Lennon or McCartney? Lennon. Okay. Uh, for an amp, do you want a low wattage amp that you can get to break up or do you want a lot of high head headroom? High headroom. <laughs> I okay. think so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. I like All that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, if you're playing a gig, would you rather do a gig at Wally's or Scullers? Wally's. Okay. Uh, Gibson or PRS? I love both. It's a tough, tough, tough one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> Fair enough. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. Fuzz face or tone bender? Fuzz face. All right. Um, experience or band of gypsies? Oh, Band of Gypsy, yeah. Okay. Uh, BPC or David Friend? Would you rather play a gig in one of those two? David, yeah. I think David, David, David you know, Friend. David yeah. Friend. Yeah. So much more intimate. I feel like I love that. I think so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I You know, B, BPC is nothing wrong with BPC, but it's just, you know, a little smaller venue is great, yeah. 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 Um, Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. All right. And then the last question, sometimes this is the hardest one. Sometimes yeah. it's the easiest one, Tomo. Okay, yeah. If you had to choose, would you rather be just doing session work or touring on the road all the time? 
Mm. Touring. Okay. So why touring over session? Yeah, because I used I used to, you know, um, okay, I used to, you know, dreaming to become a session player on a studio. Right. And because that's creating parts of records. But I think I like a live show. Yeah. Yeah. I just like a live because I play every time is different, every night's different, and I learn something. And then one night, totally, I hate my playing. And just, you know, some nights, like, you know, everybody said, great tonight. Then I go back to the hotel. Oh, that was. <laughs> oh, you know. See, just, guys, like, even Tomo yeah. has those nights. We all have those nights. Yeah, man. because I remember sometimes I do two days, like a solo, solo guitar show. Maybe one night is good, but one night somehow I didn't like phrasing. I didn't like, you know, um, reaction of my, you know, playing. But everybody loves my playing, sound, looks like it, and then sold out show, okay? So usually I have to be, yeah, like that, right? I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> like, yeah, so that's really hard because, you know, smiling, you know, yeah, and people bring, you know, stuff, you know, wow, fun. <sighs> I want to get up and practice again. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but really, so great. you know, it's really it's, that's the part is a uh, more human. You know, you know, uh, you know, all, it's, it, people being on road is very hard because every night's different. Only two hours or three hours a show, but how are you gonna spend other you know twenty hours correctly? You know not wasting your energy you know so that's really hard you know yeah that's tough. what so so you you've been all over the world touring but like what's like the biggest stage you've played biggest stage yeah i don't know um some of the some of the like, you know show in a career that was really big but i'm not sure that's really big yeah maybe japan <laughs> i mean i i yeah i i just played a job on a master's gear on us you know his his tour not the stage but you know like a sound check that was really big too <laughs> yeah that's oh, awesome yeah. yeah that's cool mm. well i super appreciate you doing this tomo and, and taking the time and thank you yeah yeah that was a, so many great questions and so many great experiences i heard from you that was excellent too you know yeah well thanks yeah. man yeah i mean maybe sometime i'm gonna have to just book a lesson with you sometime because <laughs> i didn't get to do it when i was up there so yeah yeah if you want to do that that's fine yeah actually a lot of people nowadays because people really found out about me still through instagram or youtube so almost like i get so many um skype lessons the funny part is I decided to do my guitar wisdom so that I can serve more people, more many more people all over the world. And oh, then yeah. I can maybe practice more myself. And mm -hmm. I decide not to teach Skype lesson, but more and more I get so many great emails. So I, I can't say no. It's really hard. You know? <laughs> You're yeah. too nice of a guy, man. That's yeah. what it is. Thank that's, you. So anytime. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. All right. Well, well, thanks so much. And then um, are, are you hip to Bernhoff? That the Norwegian artist, he's super funky music. Like uh, he was on tour with Alan Stone for a while. Bernhoff. I don't know. So okay. he's he's killing, man. If you like funky okay. R and B solo, you should. He's Norwegian, and Norwegian. he's okay. Woo, okay. he's. But I have to say, so many, so many unknown player. I mean, unknown means not. I'm not saying not famous or famous, but just I don't know or somebody doesn't know. In other words. I mean, so many people in the world, right? So I want to, you know, everybody to understand, say, if you say, if you somebody do, um, you know, Instagram or YouTube, sometimes you don't get a lot of fans. Oh, you know, because, because this whole system, it's not easy yeah. to connect. They mm -hmm. really do. But once you start connecting with something, you do a good job, then everything opens. After that, before, almost a noise gate, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Well, he's he's gonna be on my show this Saturday. So if anybody that's here, make sure you subscribe right. and come check out some other uh, interviews. Had some great people on, including Tomo, and Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been great. But so Tomo, you can hang out. But everybody, we'll see you okay. next time. This is gonna live on the site. So if you want to go back, if you missed any part of it in the beginning, that's great. Um, that's stop great. on back. So we'll Thank see you guys. You, see you.